Okay, linear algebra. So there's basically two words in here. One is linear and the other one's algebra. So what is algebra? Well, basically manipulating symbols using all the rules you learn in algebra. So that's algebra in a nutshell. And linear. So that means basically every variable will be to the first power or a constant. So all variables are uh, raised to the first power. So for example, uh, or not allowed, so if you have x squared, square root of x, things like that. Uh, any trig function. And let's see. It's probably good enough for now. All right, so what does a linear equation look like? So the, let's start with the most common one you've seen. So if I say, give me an equation of a line. X what, plus two. That would be, yeah, one is, but what's the general equation of a line? So we got y equals mx plus b. There's a few different forms of this, but they basically look like this right here. All right, so that is, is that slope intercept form? They have names for all these things, even though they do almost nothing and then give it a new name. Uh, slope intercept form. All right, this form right here is great and wonderful, except in what type of line will this absolutely not work? It can't work in a horizontal line. What's the slope of a horizontal line? Zero, but it's getting warmer. There's one type of line that won't work here. Vertical. Vertical. What's the slope of a vertical line? What smart word can I put here to mean what I'm thinking? Undefined. Undefined, that's a smart word. Here we go. So undefined. Uh, or you could think of it as infinitely steep. That's another way to think about it. So slope intercept form requires there to be a slope. It can be zero, but if it's undefined, there is no slope. So this is actually not terribly useful because there are certain lines, all vertical lines, you can't represent like this. So we have our general linear form. And the way it was written out back in pre-calculus is like this, ax plus by equals c. Now in this form, you can represent all lines, vertical, horizontal, or anything in between. So whether it has a slope, or the slope zero, or the slope is undefined, doesn't matter. This works for all those type of lines. Uh, if we just think about a vertical line really quickly, vertical lines, what form will they always have? Does vertical line care about the y coordinate? It's like vertical line, straight up and down. What's the equation for a vertical line? X equals, X equals something. We'll go with C, keep it consistent here. All right, I could represent that very easily in the general linear form. That's one x plus no y's or zero y's equals c. So I got my vertical line right there. If I did a horizontal line, horizontal lines have the same y coordinate everywhere. So it would be y equals a constant. And then in that case, a would be zero, b would be one, and whatever your constant value is. And uh, if your slope is not undefined or zero, it's something in between, well then a and b are going to be 
uh, not both going to be zero. So if they're not both zero, then you can get any line in between. So this general linear form is going to be exactly what our linear equations look like. So we're going to be, uh, almost every time we write a linear equation, we're going to use general linear form. So it's going to be super useful. So let's go ahead, put a box around that. There's still a problem with general linear form, so I'm going to call this the general general linear form. How many dimensions are we working with in the linear form on the board? How do you know two dimensions? There's five letters up there. Seven if you count plus and equals, but those aren't really letters. How do you know there's two dimensions and not three or five? X and Y are our variables. So that's how we know we're in two dimensions. A, B, and C are constants. So what we're going to do is go into N dimensions. Let's go to R3 first, and then we'll go uh, further than that. So if we're in R3, we have AX plus BY plus, I'll go CZ equals D. So that's three dimensions. Now we got a problem if I go to four dimensions because what letter comes after Z? I don't know. Maybe we can just pretend W does or something like that or just throw a letter back there that we're not already using. Uh, but if I go to 26 dimensions, you're, there's nothing you can do. Or 27 dimensions, we're going to run out of letters. Uh, plus I'm using A's, B's, and C's and X's, Y's, and Z's. So I think somewhere around 13 I'd have a, or 12 I'd have a problem. So, in Rn, we are going to start using subscripts, and it's going to look like A1, let me make sure I use the same letters your book uses. Yeah, they're going to, yeah, they're going to use little A's, that's fine. for the constant on the other side. All right, that would be in three dimensions using subscripts. Now it's a little weird because x1 is the first coordinate, x2 is the second coordinate, x3 is the third coordinate. So in that case, x1 is x, x2 is y, x3 is z. So it's a little bit strange. So here x1 is going to be the x you're thinking of, x2 is y, x3 is z. That was actually an R3, not an Rn. So we go to n dimensions. We have a1, x1, plus a2, x2. Now, I don't know what n is, so I can't just keep going. But I can say at this point, the pattern should be pretty clear. a3, x3 is next, a4, x4, etc., etc., until we get to a n, x n. So this is how we write the n-dimensional version. And in this case, there will be n terms. So that's what it would look like in Rn. So I think this is probably good for our intro, 1.1. Let's jump into 1.2. Uh, one of the big drawbacks is I can't uh, go to the next section without getting this section off the board. So I'll talk for a little bit before I flip the, the board over. So what we're going to do next is look at solving systems. You've done this before. We're going to start with the easiest uh, system that's not trivial. You could solve a system of one equation and one variable. It's so silly. Don't even write this down. But if I had like x minus 3 equals 5, that's a linear equation 
Uh, technically, if I put it in general linear form, it would look like that. When there's basically no work to do. So we're not going to look at one equation in one variable. That's two, it's algebra one. And you probably did that before algebra one. So two equations in two variables is how we'll start, which is something you should have done probably lots of times before. So we'll start with that. So I don't have one handy, I'll just make one up, and it may have a fraction solution, but it should be an easy enough system. 2x minus 3y equals 1, and negative x plus y equals 4. Alright, solve this however you want. Elimination and substitution are the two ways that most of you are going to solve it. You could use a matrix, but up to you. Actually, do substitution. We'll do elimination next. Do substitution. Maybe it's been too long. I'd say solve for x or y in the second equation. Any questions on my steps or I make any mistakes? You may have done it slightly different steps, but you should have the same those same values at the end. I didn't try to plug them in, so I might be totally wrong. So I'll plug them into the second one. Should have been a negative 13 right there, which I'm sure changes everything over here. Thank you. 
Is that closer to what some of you got? All right. So enough of us agree. I don't need to check. All right. So it's a good idea to check. I did just find out I was wrong. Normally, if I was, didn't have 10 people nodding and saying, yeah, that's probably right, I would, I would keep checking right here just to make sure. Okay, how many equations are written on the board? So I have 11 equations written down. You probably have something in that around 11 on your paper. I doubt you have less than five. There's probably somewhere between 5 and 15 equations right now. All right, how many equations did we start with? 2. So we turned 2 equations into a different number of equations depending on who you asked. I mean, there's really 2 that matter at the end. Those are the important 2 right there. So somewhere along the way, we created all these extra equations, and at the end, we basically wrapped it up with these 2 equations are the 2 that were really important at the end. A lot of times you're going to see the answer written as x comma y equals 13, negative 9. I did show you how to do vertical vectors. It's not very impressive, but it will show you right here the two equations pretty clearly. x equals equation and the y equals equation. So somewhere along the way we create all this extra stuff, but we really only needed two equations at any uh, point in the solution process. Let's redo the same problem and go with elimination this time. So you are not allowed to use substitution at all this time around. So using only elimination, we're going to do the exact same system. 2x minus 3y equals 1. And negative x plus y equals 4. So I want to warn you about my handwriting. My y's look like 4's. Usually my y, or usually, you can always tell if I zoom in really far, I'll circle the difference. If you look right there, that's how you can tell it's a y, not a 4 because my fours always, almost always hang over a little bit. And I make my y's with one pen stroke, so the y should never have a little thing hanging out over there. So that's the way to tell apart my y's. Pretty much no matter what font you write in, something is gonna look like something else, whether your one looks like your seven, your two looks like your z, uh, two sometimes looks like an equal sign if you write really fast, things like this. All right, using only elimination. We're going to solve this. Let's uh, eliminate x first. That looks pretty easy to do. How can I eliminate x? So I basically double my second equation, add them together. So the way I'm going to write that, I'll leave the original problem here, and I'll write my work over here. So x minus 3y equals 1. Now I'm going to multiply by positive 2. like this. So I'm doubling my second equation and then I'm adding that to the first equation. So this is how I'll write this out. So we got 2x plus negative 2x is 0x. Negative uh, 3y plus y is negative y equals you know, 1 plus 8 is 9. All right, so we have negative y equals 9 and y equals negative 9. All right, so go ahead and eliminate. So we just eliminated x, so start over, meaning go back to the original and eliminate y. So I don't want you to substitute, no substitution allowed. I said only elimination. So don't use the fact you know the y value. So I want you only using elimination. So eliminate the y this time. It should be very similar.
most of you probably multiplied the second equation by three, but I would get something similar if I multiplied the first equation by the reciprocal. I'm not terribly good at fractions, so I'm going to do my fraction addition and subtraction separately. So I'm going to separate those two operations out. So we got two thirds minus three thirds is negative one third x equals thirteen thirds. So multiply by positive three, negative three. We get x equals negative thirteen. All right, so we got our x and y values using elimination. So any questions on that elimination? So I'm guessing almost every time you use elimination in the past, you actually use substitution somewhere along the way. You probably didn't just use elimination like we did. Elimination gets a lot trickier if you have three variables. Substitution also gets trickier if you have three variables. So what we're going to do, instead of well, maybe I'll give you a three equation, three unknown. Turn you loose. See what happens. See who can solve it. So let's get one that's not too miserable here. if you make up a three by three or a three uh, equation three unknowns it'll the answer will probably be horrible and I don't want to do that right now I need to rewrite my notes completely. That's all right. All right. So hopefully this one won't be too bad. So we x plus two y plus two z equals four. X plus three y plus three z equals five. And two x plus six y plus five z equals six. All right, solve however you want. Pretty sure substitution will be a major part of your solution. Uh, when you have finished, check your answers, and I also want to know how many equations you have on your paper when you're done. So don't worry about the number of equations until you actually have the answer.
and give you a one minute head start and then I will try to get to the solution first. So I probably solved this different from you, unless you remembered how you were taught in pre-calculus class using matrices. All right, so who else got this answer in this amount of time? Oh man, we're in a very small group. All right, so hopefully the rest of you were on the way, ish. All right, so count up the number of equations you have. I'm more interested in the number of equations that people who finish the problem correctly have. 
off by a negative sign. Oh, all right. So if you finish this, how many questions, how many s equations did you have written down? Eight, that's pretty good. Six, 14, okay, I was expecting somewhere, numbers around 10, 15, somewhere in that, that area. All right, the work I did, <coughs> I will explain what in the world's going on tomorrow, but basically every single step along the way, so that's one step, second, third, fourth, fifth, on all those steps, there's exactly three equations. So this way basically keeps your three equations together and manipulates them into the very last form, which is really obvious, x, y, and z, what they are. So we'll be doing that, uh, how to do that tomorrow.